Sorry about that, but yeah, back in Sirach 11, verse 21, I'm going to read it over. It says, Marvel not at the works of sinners. Because we understand the works of sinners being in the, uh, being uh, in these last days, knowing that the earth is given into the hands of the wicked, and everything that's in the world is contrary to the scriptures, because they, that's just what it is in the end times. We understand the works of the sinners will prosper more than a righteous, just man that's trying to strive. A righteous, just man that's trying to strive and that's trying to stray away from pride is looked down upon in this prideful, wicked, adulterous, sinful world, man. Because the works of sinner, they get rewarded. They give gifts. They give prizes. They get put on a pedestal. But the Lord said, marvel not, but trust in the Lord and abide in thy labor. What's our labor? Our labor is to being righteous, to being diligent, putting off that pride. Because we just read in the 10th chapter that the beginning of prize when one departed from God, the scripture says, even thyself shall discontinue from thy heritage. I'm going to get that real quick and then I'm going to jump back into this. Because the book of prophesied that, yes, we was once a nation. Because of our pride and wickedness, the Lord is going to let the enemy enter, 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 enter into our gates and um, destroy us and take us down and send us into captivity. But guess what? The Lord said we was going to discontinue from our heritage. The Lord said he was going to allow this to happen because of pride, you know. And you get judged for accordingly for what you have done. This is Jeremiah 17, verse 4. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thy heritage that I gave thee, and I will cause thee to serve thy enemies in a land which thou knowest not. For ye have kindled a fire in my anger, which shall burn forever. So we transgress to the Lord's laws and statutes and commandments, and we got prideful as a nation. So now coming back, the scripture says, Seek him ten times more. That's in the book of Baruch. It says, for it is an easy thing in the sight of the Lord on a sudden to make a poor man rich. Okay? So in how are we poor? When you go into the word poor, it means be, to be weak, frail. Okay? We poor for one because we don't know who we are. Okay? And we poor really in this condition because the rulers that be, the elite that be, and the system and the way it's set up, it's not for you to prosper. Although you have a nine to five, a job, or may have a career, you're still stuck in that debt system. You're still stuck in that slave system, man. Especially if you're not woke to the truth, man. You're a slave to the system, so therefore you're not rich in the system, man. You're doing enough to keep the system afloat and to keep your life afloat, man. And enjoy your breadcrumbs. And these people take pride in just having breadcrumbs. Or living a lifespan, and just an average lifespan where you get to accomplish all these goals. And claim they have some type of connection with the God, but they deny him it works, man. It says... And that's a true labor, man. Showing the Lord you love and appreciate what he done and work and deed. It says, and the Lord's going to make us rich, man. It says, the blessing of the Lord is in the reward of the godly. And suddenly he maketh his blessing to flourish. Say not, what profit is there of my service and what good things shall I have hereafter? Again, say not, I have enough and possess many things and what evil can come to me after. So that in verse 23 and 24 is two separate things. It's saying, don't say what is there, of, what, what profit is there for the service. Because the Lord is going to reward us, man. Okay? He's going to give us everything in our desires and hearts. Because while we laboring and focusing to get right with him, man. Because we understand the present and time we in. It says, again, say not to have enough and possess many things. That's a prideful statement. You think you got enough and you possess many things? And you don't think evil going to come according to your sins and your folly? It says, in the day of prosperity, there is a forgetfulness of affliction, and in the day of affliction, there is a remembrance of prosperity. But that's the point, man, verse 24. You got a lot of people that's out here prideful, and they focus on what they got, and they don't care about serving the Lord, man. And if they do, they go about and serve Him the wrong way, okay? And, 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 and in word, not in deed. They got a zeal, but not according to knowledge. Our people got that, but they lacking the other one, man. But it's also going to be that demise. This uh, this Deuteronomy 32, uh, um, this uh, Deuteronomy chapter, so like Deuteronomy 32 and 15. But Jeshurun wax fat and kick, y'all waxing fat. Thou art covered, thou art grown thick, thou art covered with the fatness. Then he forsook God which made him and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. So that's the pride that Jeshurun, okay, which is another uh, word for uh, Jerusalem, okay, Israel. 
it. That's the English way to say it, but hey, man, it, 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 we got prideful as a nation. We lightly esteem our Lord. So what do you do? Hey, this is the book of Baruch, chapter 2, verse 2. To bring upon us, I'm going to start at 1. The Lord have made good his word, which he pronounced against us. But what? That pride. The Lord said he surely will avenge your pride. Pride be going for destruction. It says, and against our judges that judge Israel, and against our kings, and against our princes, and against the men of Israel and Judah. And this, the wicked kings, the wicked judges, the wicked prince, the proud kings, the proud judges, the proud princes, they will receive their judgment, man. And guess what? Our whole nation went into captivity off that, man. For the pride of the nation. And especially these evil men who back to then in reincarnation is doing the same evil things. To bring upon us great plagues such as never happened under the whole heaven as it came to pass in Jerusalem according to the thing that were written in the law of Moses that a man should eat the flesh of his own sons and the flesh of his own daughters. Moreover, he hath delivered them to be in subjection to all the kingdoms that are round about to be a reproach and desolation among all the people round about where the Lord hath scattered them. Thus were we cast down and not exalted because we have sinned against the Lord our God and have not been obedient unto his voice. What's his voice? The prophets. Hey, most three and seven. <laughs> Tell you, surely the Lord would do nothing. He revealed his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. Jeremiah 28 tells you that the Lord sent his prophets, man, saying, hey, do not this abominable thing that I hate. The prophets that been before me, before the old prophesied against great kingdoms and great countries, of famine, pestilence, you know, so, hey, they're going to be doing it today, man. You know? And this is all proven. Hey, hey guess what? For our pride, the Lord destroyed us and brought us down as a nation, man. Hey, this is 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And when you love in the world, when you love something, you have your desires, your focus, and your time on that, man. And this world promotes folly. This world is given to the hands of the wicked. And this world is anti-Messiah, man, which... And you people may know it as Antichrist because Christ is an idol, man. Okay? The Hebrew word for Messiah, which means the anointed, is Ha Mashiach, which means the anointed. Because our Lord and Savior spoke Hebrew when you read Acts 26. You know? But I'm going to end it with this, man, because it says, For all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. It's not of the Father, but it's of the world. So all these things, man, it's of the world, man. Being proud, can't humble down and come to the Lord. It says, the world passed away and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. So if you're doing the will of God, if you continuing in your labor and not marveling at sinners as it is written, if you take taking heed what's written, man, and not letting no one steal your salvation, your glory, your heritage, hey, guess what, man? Hey, you're going to have eternal life. And this world going to pass away. Pride going to pass away. Wickedness going to get old. You're going to die soon, so it's like serve the Lord and store up your treasures in heaven. And not on earth, man. And that was the whole that was the whole reason us being in this captivity to learn from our mistakes, be better from our mistakes, take heed and give glory to the Lord, man. I know I said we're gonna end it on that, but I gotta end it with this. This Proverbs chapter 8, verse 13. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. And that's what the Lord requires for you to fear him. If you fear the Lord, you're gonna love him. If you love him, you're gonna do what he say do. You're gonna have faith and works, man. It says, pride, arrogancy, and evil way in the four mouth do I hate. So if you fear the Lord, you're going to hate these things. You're going to hate yourself for doing it, for having these thoughts, for being in this flesh, man. Because, yeah, we subject to vanity. Yeah, we in these chains of darkness, man. Yeah, we in this bondage of corruption, man. Yeah, we got to deal with the elements of the world and behold it and still in this world. But just mentally, spiritually, we got to depart from this place, man, and trust in the only begotten uh, son and the father who sent him. You know, and then that within that, within that doctrine, that teaching, that way of life, it don't have room for a pride. You have to be held accountable for your mistakes. You have to be better and endure and righteousness and put off everything of this world and everything that this world taught us, man. And that's the whole reason of the truth, man. Taking heed there unto according to the word is how you get cleansed, man. Getting cleansed from that pride and that filth, man. So we can be meek for repentance so the Lord can save us when he come back. Because if you ain't did that, you're going to be destroyed according to scriptures. In a day like no other, in Jacob's trouble, and famine, and an economic collapse, and a martial law, and all the things that was written and prophesied in the scriptures that happened a four times during our forefathers in the ancient world, throughout our different captivities, even unto this present evil day, being here in America, man. 
It was all prophesied that it was going to happen. Why? Because of our pride, man. It brought us very low. Scripture tell you that. Pride brings you very low, man. Okay? But Lord, what hope is thus was edifying? We want to give all praise and glory and honor to Yahweh. Bar Shami Yahweh Shah, double honor to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. Shalom.